All right, nice to meet you, everyone here, and uh, let's con let's start with the Spinnaker. So, how many of you have uh, heard about Spinnaker before? Okay, quite a many. Uh, how many have used it yourself? No one. Okay, then I, gu I guess you are a good target audience for for this for this talk. So, f but first a little bit of intro introduction of myself. So, like said, I'm working at No Cloud as a, as a cloud architect. Uh, I'm living in Berlin, working for the German team. And uh, my technical background is that uh, I worked quite a long time with the kind of Red Hat ecosystem, but at some point I started to see the writing on the wall, so to speak, uh, that uh, uh, a major clouds are going to be a big thing and uh, I guess that was behind my switch to not cloud and if any any one of you is interested for working for us you definitely get to work on the bleeding edge so I personally have been happy with this but uh, about the spinnaker so this is something that I started working uh, last fall for a customer uh, which unfortunately I cannot name uh, so they had this legacy uh, legacy deployment system using Lambda on AWS uh, that was provisioning auto-scaling groups in, uh, in a uh, blue-green fashion. And uh, all, all of this was working quite nicely, but it, it was custom stuff. And the guy who worked on this, he left the company. And uh, they that's why they kind of began searching for out-of-the-box solution or, or open source solution to replace all the custom custom deployment stuff and uh, luckily Spinnaker was available. So so the software deployments in legacy IT like on the slide though these are the main problems so we have to have to remember that uh, there are a lot of companies that do not have any CI CD pipelines so uh, this is still new to, to many many companies and uh, huge amounts of efficiency can be gained uh, for example using Spinnaker and uh, of course even with Jenkins but uh, these are the main problems so with the kind of legacy IT so the uh, software deployments can be really slow I mean if you are doing everything manually uh, there's no automation every time you have to release something you have to maybe ask a permission reserve some kind of date from calendar and uh, all this is, is like done manually uh, and uh, you often there can be like a lot of emails going from people to people is, is this okay can we release this version on, on this date and uh, we must reserve these guys doing everything so uh, so this this is not really nice. Personally, I wouldn't want to be working at a company like this, and uh, happily I'm not. So the benefits of CI/CD pipeline are mainly uh, like increased velocity. You can release new versions uh, as as fast as your pipeline can complete its work. So, uh, for example, at the current customer, the pipeline run takes about 10 minutes. So. Basically, you could do, do a new release every every ten minutes if you wanted, and uh, and you have also a pretty like good certainty that everything will work because of the automated test, not only on the CI part, uh, but on the CD part in Spinnaker. So uh, the customer has a smoke tests, which really work quite nicely, and those are integrated to to Spinnaker. So. Uh, there has been no no problems with like deployments failing uh, because some some bug or some issue went through the pipeline. So I think this is real nice. And uh, for the developers, of course, if you can see the results of your co changes real real fast, uh, this can be a, I think a really good efficiency booster and a really good motivation for your work. So. I think the developer experience is, is always the number one thing with the CI CD pipelines, uh, at least from my experience. So it's all about serving the developers in, the, in this sense. But uh, since I personally come from the kind of ops background or sysadmin background, it, I think this is also good for the ops team because they don't have to do manual work. So uh, they can, for example, work on the Spinnaker stuff and the kind of 
uh, you learn some useful stuff I instead of the old ways of doing things. Uh, so what is Spinnaker? Uh, it's an open source project originally started by Netflix uh, to replace their old, old Asgard kind of deployment system. Uh, I think the work, work started some sometime around 2013 and 2014 and uh, it, this was open sourced in 2015. You can see the blog post about about this I think on Medium and uh, I would say this wasn't originally like a huge success so uh, so not many people maybe noticed this. So I, I think that was because everyone was so big on s on Jenkins. Jenkins was almost like a synonym for 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 doing CI/CD pipelines. So, but uh, it's good that there are more more options now, and uh, many people think that Jenkins is starting to feel a little bit like old and fragile and legacy and uh, and the whole s setup o of different. Uh, Plugins can be a little bit confusing, uh, and uh, you never know how, how well something is supported. So, at least my customer is saying that they want to get totally rid of rid of Spinnaker uh, as soon as possible. So that uh, that I think I is telling. So, uh, and how the Spinnaker itself is implemented and it implemented is actually quite nice. So. It's totally based on microservices, so there's a certain set of microservices, uh, and uh, you can deploy it on instances. But I would say the most common way to, to deploy is on top of Kubernetes, and uh, it is fully supported by the installer. Uh, that will we will talk a more uh, a bit later, and. Uh, but it's also nice that this was included in the Cloud Native Foundation. Uh, landscape I think it was last year or something so I think this also gives a lot of a lot of credibility to Spinnaker in my opinion at least and uh, but like you see there are a lot of options so I'm I'm certainly not, not saying that Spinnaker is the only option that you you can select and uh, but it's definitely definitely one of the most unique in, in the way that it's it's almost fully focused on the CD part of the C CI CD pipeline. So uh, some might say this is a little bit of limitation, and uh, for for some some companies this may be fitting. Uh, uh, but uh, I think it serves serves its purpose. Okay. Uh, maybe we should have a short look at uh, Spinnaker itself. So, unfortunately, I was not able to get permission from the customer to so show the real production setup. So I had to kind of provision my own own Spinnaker. Uh, so I, I will be just uh, kind of clicking through the through the UI and showing stuff, and uh, later I will also show the pipeline template. So. Uh, with Spinnaker, you basically have, have the options of using the UI, which is maybe not recommended. So, uh, uh, the with the customer, we are using templated pipelines, but uh, still good to see the UI, which is quite unique in my opinion. Do I need to make this bigger, or do you see everything? Okay, it's fine. Actually, I have trouble seeing it from the monitor, so I'm going to put it a little bigger. Yeah. So this is the kind of Spinnaker UI, and uh, this kind of the main view, view when you log in. Or should I say, actually, it doesn't have a kind of authentication out of the box, So, but it, ha it has a lot of options for that, so you can integrate with uh, your identity provider, so it has some support. OAuth support and uh, so on, and uh, this is what we use at the customer. But uh, for for this demo setup, I don't have any other case, and that's why I'm using port forwarding to show this to you. So I in the main screen, you s you basically see what's going on and uh, projects part. Sadly, it's empty now, but uh, in here you would see all the projects and everything that's happening and uh, whether everything is green. 
uh, but the application for, for this demo is maybe the most interesting part. So uh, here you can s see the main main stuff. So uh, I guess the pipelines are the most most uh, are the main main point with the spinnaker. So uh, let's take a look. So every pipeline starts with a trigger. So it's kind of the how you trigger the pipeline. And for this spinnaker has a lot of options as you see here. So you can trigger time-based, like with cron, you can trigger on git commit, uh, you can connect to Jenkins, Travis, and uh, you can also trigger on, on based on another spinnaker pipeline. And uh, then there's the path sub on Google Cloud. Uh, webhook and Docker regist registry, and uh, this might be interesting of interest to many of you. So the do Docker registry integration works that when you push a new image tag to like a private registry, that will trigger the pipeline. And uh, I think that probably what more most people might be using in in the context of Kubernetes. So the CI, syst CI system builds and tests the docker image uh, and builds the software and uh, when uh, everything is done on the CR part it will push the new image to the private registry and uh, that's when the uh, responsibility changes to, to spinnaker uh, but you can of course start the pipeline manually if you want and uh, in the, but in the traditional kind of instance-based deployments, which are still often used at many companies, uh, there is the bake AMI stage. And uh, this is something that uh, will bake an AMI when you have, a, have, have package your software into like Debian package or, or, or RPM package on, on, on Red Hat or CentOS side. And uh, uh, this baking functionality is, is integrated with Packer. So under the hood, it's, it's running Packer. And it is, this is just a kind of uh, UI, UI for Packer and a kind of front end. And uh, I have a, here you can select the package name. So uh, that, that package, it will, it will pull, the pull from the repository that you have, prob probably an internal repository to your company and uh, you can select the base OS, y you can configure anything in here and uh, of course you can choose the VM type where it will bake the AMI and uh, then you can, s you can pass a anything to the Packer uh, script so like any values, any parameters and uh, I have some, some here so uh, so you definitely need, need to def define for the packer which VPC you want to bake the AMI in and of course the subnet and and uh, other basic stuff with packer like s the security group that it applies to the uh, instance where it is doing the baking. And, uh, and you can pass the name of the name of the packer script. So you can have several if you want. So you can fully customize the, customize the Packer scripts, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, the next step with AWS is of course deploy. Well, it you can run of course tests in between, but let's look at the deploy stage here. So uh, this all stuff, like said before, can be can be configured in the pipeline templates and. Uh, but it's nice to see them here in the kind of graphical form. Uh, so here you can choo you choose the account that you have configured to Spinnaker. So basically you, you have to configure here every cloud account that you have. And uh, you can select where you want to do the deployment and you can select the region and the subnets. And uh, like Kubernetes, you have to tag the subnets you want to use in a certain way that they show up in here, so, uh, yeah. And uh, this naming is, is, is gonna show up both on the Spinnaker side and uh, on the AWS side, so, yes. 
and for strategy deployment strategy the, the options are currently with Spinnaker Highlander which kind of replaces the old old auto scaling group with the new one and uh, well destroys the old one and uh, the second common one well I should say maybe the most common one is the red black for for some historical reasons it's called red black here even though it's exactly the same as blue blue green so uh, this will create a new auto scaling group and uh, it will on your how you want to do this it, it will kind of scale back the old one so it can be kept around if you want to roll back for example uh, then there's the rolling red black which does this in a rolling way but it's still experimental and uh, th these are the actions currently but uh, like uh, two months ago there was the release of a software called Kayenta, so open source software. So that will that is integrated to the Spinnaker, and uh, it will become available. And uh, then you will be able to do uh, canary deployments. So how those work? For example, if you have a Datadoc, you can integrate the deployments with your Datadoc, and if if the metrics after deployment look good, then you can replace the old old auto scaling group with the new one. So I think that provides a really high kind of confidence that your software and everything is working as intended. And uh, uh, ev to everyone you that is familiar with the AWS and uh, this that's the normal stuff that you define like load balancer, security groups, instance types and uh, number of instances you want to run. So normally of course like you want to have one instance on every availability zone for high availability and uh, yeah a lot of options here and uh, but there are a lot of like other stages too so many of you are probably interested in, in Kubernetes so so this is also a possibility so as you see I have configured three providers here so AWS Microsoft Azure and Kubernetes so uh, this is the one of the nicest things about Spinnaker so uh, I would say many companies are kind of becoming interested in the multi-cloud thing and uh, with that in my opinion it helps hugely if you have one tool that can can kind of help you help you with that to provide kind of one interface to, to every cloud so uh, Spinnaker is real nice in this sense that uh, you can use this to deploy to any cloud. So, uh, but let's let's look at the Kubernetes stuff. Slow. Well, let's jump back to the slides for a moment. So here you can see the supported providers, and uh, it's quite a lot. Uh, and uh, when you install Spinnaker, you have to configure all the cloud accounts. And uh, that's how they show up in the UI, and that's how you can u use those. Okay, let's look at let's look closer at the different Spinnaker components. So these are the microservices that I was talking about a minute ago. So these are the basic ones. So the org is the orchestration engine. It's really like the the brains brains behind Spinnaker, and uh, Igor is the integration with kind of external system like Jenkins and Git. And uh, Gate is the Spinnaker API. So everything you can kind of click in the UI that you just saw you can you can do through the uh, gate with the rest interface uh, that's real nice if you want to do your own customization or do something some some in some kind of integration to your existing systems and uh, yeah Roscoe is the image bakery that is basically a front end for the for the backer so and uh, when you have the authentication configured, uh, this fiat 
is is what is used under under the hood and uh, the front 50 is the uh, kind of persistence layer so of course uh, there is a lot of stuff in Spinnaker that has to be persisted and uh, the normal way at least in AWS is that you pass a S3 bucket where it will put and maintain the persistence stuff and a and little bit about the concept so so I would say the main main kind of level is the account so the cloud account that you have and uh, under that you can have many applications and uh, under under applications you have clusters so uh, the clusters basically uh, contain multiple server server groups and uh, these server groups are like for example in AWS with the normal instance based deployments the server groups are basically the same as auto scaling groups so th these are different versions of your software uh, that are that are running that is running in in the account and uh, yeah it's the same with the kubernetes uh, so actually in spinnaker you have uh, like two different kubernetes providers so you have the old v1 kubernetes provider which works in in the same way uh, as the ec2 or instance based deployment so it will just deploy replica sets in the same way as auto scaling group so uh, it's very opion opionated and uh, not not really using uh, too much of the all the Kubernetes functionality. But uh, they are now building a V2 Kubernetes provider in Spinnaker, and this will be fully manifest based, meaning that uh, it will provide access to basically all all the all the resource types that are available. Uh, but this this is still work in progress, so you probably should wait if you plan to use that for product production yeah and on the pipeline side of course there's the pipeline that consists of several stages and for the pipeline you have a have a trigger so this is the stuff that we, we just saw and uh, yeah these are the deployment types uh, the current customer is in the red black so this is the same basically the same stuff they were before doing there with their custom setup uh, with the custom lambda that was deploying the auto scaling groups and uh, one thing i didn't mention was the custom deployment so if you have like exotic needs you you can make a custom strategy in spinnaker and then you can do everything kind of every anything you want and uh, we are using it for 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 the smoke tests so uh, the custom strategy is nice because you can, behind that you can put a put a lot of kind kind of low level uh, functionality of the deployment. So your main pipeline stays kind of stays more simple and more clean. So for example, the developers really don't want to know the details about about scaling uh, scaling down or di uh, disabling disabling server groups. They want to see the kind of higher level view into the pipeline and uh, this is how, how the custom st strategy can be used and of course you can implement a lot of different tests with the same same mechanism uh, yeah and the canary I canary is, is coming yeah but no one wants to kind of click click into ui so uh, that's why the templated pipelines are really I think the way to go so no infrastructure as clicks so the, the templated pipelines are are written written in YAML and you can of also use Jinja too in that so if you are anyone of you has used Ansible so it, it's it's pretty uh, family, family, familiar to you and uh, how this pipeline templates are deployed there is a CLI tool called Drawer, so uh, this, is, this is currently the mechanism uh, how you deploy. And uh, you can, of course, imp uh, include this into your CI, CI system. So you could have the pipeline templates and pipeline configs in, in Git, and uh, whenever there is a change, that will be automatically applied to, to the spinnaker. So I would say this is the best practice. 
rather than manually always running the CLI tool. And, uh, and this of, of course uses the Spinnaker API, the gate. And uh, yeah. Maybe we could take a look at uh, what the pipeline templates look like. Uh, maybe after the next slide. Yeah, this is this is how how it actually works. So you have the pipeline templates. So that's kind of the well, like, well, like the name says says it's the template. But you need also the pipeline configuration. So only after the you apply the pipeline configuration, you have a pipeline visible in the UI and uh, inside the Spinnaker. So it's like uh, two different entities that you need. And and uh, the reasoning for for this is that you have you can have a like like the same kind of pipeline for all your applications. You just want to pass uh, the different parameters related to the different software components that you are running. So you don't have to kind of duplicate anything. So this is real nice. And let's take a look. So let's take a look at the pipeline configuration. So it's really quite simple. So uh, here you define define the triggers that you are using and uh, which type of triggers. And uh, the main thing here is is uh, or are the parameters that you have. So all these will be passed to the to the pipeline template so this is all kind of the application related stuff and uh, only after you apply this you will have the pipeline visible and usable so this is some kind of i think it's typical stuff that you see in here that if you start using this you will probably have the same same kind of kind of things here kind of configuration related to the deployments uh, in this case to aws and uh, one important thing in the end is, of course, reference to the, to the template that is going to be used. And uh, maybe that's the next thing that I will I will show you. Okay, so uh, this is the template. So starts with some kind of uh, basic configuration, and uh, you can also pass parameters to the, to the uh, template to the pipeline and it's normally it could it could be like the package name so that's passed to the pipeline so and then you have the variables defined and these these are the mostly the variables that are kind of passed from the pipeline configuration and uh, yeah uh, then you have the stages here so uh, as you see see in here and uh, uh, I would say this is quite, quite typical to check first the input. So in this case, uh, that the package name is is the correct one. So otherwise, the developers can maybe input the wrong package name into the wrong pipeline. So that's why we check the package name first uh, as a first stage. And the second stage we have to bake. So. This the, these are the parameters that are passed to Packer and a uh, few other options. And we have the template that we are, we are using to for the Packer. Uh, this, of course, has been customized a little bit. And uh, with the kind of chat ops way tradition, we can send messages to Slack. So pipelines run and you get notifications, for example, you can configure if, if if some pipeline fails. You can send a message to some Slack channel, and uh, that we are that's what we are doing here. And uh, th in this pipeline, we are first deploying the design, 
and uh, for the deployment part we are using a model so as you as you see in here we, d we don't want to repeat code here in the pipeline template which we have the model defined in the same file uh, you know, in the end end of it so uh, all the different environments use the same mod module uh, on what changes is only the parameters and uh, yeah here we have deployment to staging and uh, deploy to production so it's it's quite simple and uh, I have commented out uh, data doc eventing so we want to in send send notifications to data doc also and uh, that's possible with this run job type of stage so this actually a cool stage this run job so what it does is you it allows you to run any docker uh, container on kubernetes and uh, you you can do anything you you want and uh, integrate that with the spinnaker so spinnaker checks the return code from the container and uh, that's how how it works basically and uh, either the state succeeds or it fails so you could do do like build your s even build your kind of software inside Spinnak spinnaker this way if you really want it and the uh, end of the file we have the modules so this is kind of the deployment so we don't have to repeat this this yaml code so it's only once here so this is all the aws related st stuff and of course if you use kubernetes or if you use azure these are are different yes All right, installation. So I guess that's the first part. That's and for this, there are actually several options. So Halward is the installation tool. So there are two ways to run this. So either you can have you can run it from your own laptop or you can have a management instance, but it's not really cool. So uh, they have provided a Docker container for, for this. So you can run this container on for example on the same cluster that you are going to deploy spinnaker into and uh, on or of course you can run it run the uh, docker container on your own laptop so that's totally possible too so you probably don't want management instance kind of uh, kind of accumulating cost in in your cloud service so i think the container method is the best and that's what i'm using personally nowadays and uh, then there's helm chart and this is of of course really useful Th the helm is like a like a package man manager for kubernetes and uh, you can install software really easily with this like like similar like on top of linux and uh, there is a helm chart for spinnaker but uh, i have to say it, it's not like it's not supported uh, very well wi by the spinnaker community so it's like more for quick testing so with the halyard you can deploy into in the kubernetes and the halyard is the main main tool but these two other ones can be useful if you want to just quickly test spinnaker uh, see how it looks like and then there's the aws quick start available so uh, how that works is it just deploys one really large instance uh, with everything everything running inside so I think it has 32 gigabytes of RAM or something so what's your costs if you, if you deploy that and forget it running uh, yeah but the nice cool thing about the installation is also that the, the hardware is basically spinnaker deploying spinnaker un under the hood so it's very similar to if any one of you have worked at OpenStack so uh, with with uh, triple O it's basically the same way OpenStack deploying OpenStack but yeah this is probably the first thing that many of you are thinking so how does this compare to Jenkins so again I'm not saying that uh, you should use Spinnaker just mainly talking that it's one option option that you can kind of evaluate uh, depending on your needs 
but here are, um, in my opinion, the main main differences. So Spinnaker is is, is tailor made for multi cloud CD. So it's like the perfect tool for this. And uh, the UI, even though it's kind of bad practice to have infrastructure as clicks, the UI still can provide a nice view for for developers uh, that kind of abstracts away the cloud environment. So going into the AWS console to check out things can be a little intimidating to f for many guys that are not cloud architects. So with Spinnaker, it provides kind of high level abstraction in into your cloud cloud accounts. And uh, in, in some, some companies, this can be useful. And uh, also the integration with Packer is quite nice. So you don't, you don't have to do any custom stuff. Uh, so this is really tightly integrated and uh, you have the you have the Rosco service acting as a front end for this and uh, yeah this is really cool and uh, no need for scripting or plugins so I, I think a lot of people when I use uh, use Jenkins they have written a lot of cu custom scripts for everything especially related to the deployments if there are no good plugins available so but Spinnaker comes out of the box with everything. Uh, no need, no need for, for any of this. So, it, uh, in that sense, it's kind of fully integrated experience. Uh, the lessons learned. So this is the general stuff, in my opinion, that is most important. This may sound a little bit obvious, but uh, uh, this this is not the kind of r uh, product that you should maybe expect. So like you get it and everything sh works automatically without any problems. So I have r run into, f into quite a many issues myself and, uh, but most have been fixed with the new Spinnaker releases, but still you, ha you should have a certain mindset, uh, kind of open source mindset that you're part of the, part of the community. And uh, if something doesn't work, you should either fix it yourself or is you should report to the Spinnaker project. So, uh, go to GitHub, uh, create an issue and, uh, kind of at least uh, gather uh, some kind of good report what you what did you do and uh, how it doesn't work and so on uh, so it, this is definitely uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't have the mindset that you get is get this and then if something doesn't work you bang your head on the wall uh, uh, there is currently no one there is no one except armory company called armory you can call to get support uh, and the second thing is that you should really allocate enough time and resources to do this. So this, wa for me, this was maybe the biggest uh, surprise when I started working this with this. I was kind of thinking that uh, I will be I will be done with this uh, like in a few weeks at most. Uh, uh, but this really, for me to be able to to learn the spinnaker, I think it took s ultimately like several months to really know it know it quite well so don't under underestimate the time time to kind of to learn this and to install install it properly with all the cloud integrations so it's it's not hard but uh, it there are a lot of kind of small configuration options and everything that everything has has to fit together to to things to be able to work and uh, of course the resourcing side so you probably shouldn't be the only one at your company doing this so if you leave no one knows what this platform is and uh, so especially with uh, cloud services uh, many people are now used to kind of getting systems really easily like with one api call so always when you introduce this kind of system that's kind of fully self-installed and s fully self-managed you have to weight the pros and cons of, of this approach and uh, but in my opinion the spinnaker is is worth the, the effort and of course the armory.io uh, has really ni nice documentation so the spinnaker documentation is sometimes a bit lacking uh, but these guys ha have really kind of made their own version of the spinnaker documentation and uh, in my opinion it's better so definitely check this up 
And from the technical side, nothing special here. Well, of course, there will be like uh, one million different things, but these are the like uh, when you start some of the kind of basic things. So, uh, yeah, well, we, when you start with the pipeline templates, you probably notice that the ROER tool is, is not very good wi it with error handling and reporting. So, uh, if you have some errors in the templates, the, the messages that it, it gives you are not always uh, very clear about what's wrong but uh, you will learn you will learn this quite quickly i would say and uh, then the problem basically goes away uh, and uh, when starting of course when you are deploying th in this into the kubernetes and uh, if the deployer doesn't seem to kind of finish properly which is quite common actually if you have errors in your cloud account configuration uh, you should really kind of monitor the deployment with kubectl. So what what you can do is that uh, you can do kubectl uh, get get pods and watch the output how it's evolved uh, kind of uh, forward uh, going on. So you can see the uh, pods appearing and uh, if they become healthy or if they kind of start rest end up in restart loop. Uh, then you can see which of the services is the problem and uh, when you see kind of the problematic service you can check out the uh, uh, logs for, for the pod so you can uh, and of course container you can see what's the error so uh, this is basically uh, this is Java software under the hood so you can s maybe see, see things like exceptions in, in the logs and uh, you normally can kind of see what's the problem so this kind of thing uh, is useful for the in initial installation so when things when when you kind of do this iteration with the configuration so but when you get this right everything everything works works well and uh, you can start using using the, the software and uh, let's still Actually, uh, time is up, so maybe we won't be looking looking at the uh, UI anymore. But at, at least you saw a little bit about it. But uh, like I said before, if you want to test this quickly, use the AWS Quick Start, or uh, uh, that was the one op option. And uh, th the second option to get easily started is the Helm chart. So, yes, any questions from the audience? No. I see one coming. Uh, thank you for a great, great presentation. Thank uh, you. you already mentioned it a little bit that a uh, new version will use manifests, but I have a little bit more general question related to this. So uh, I have a little bit different idea about uh, CI CD pipeline. I think it's a good idea to have some artifacts th that you can test and deploy. Mm. So, for example, the generated uh, Helm pa packages. Yeah. And in this case, you cannot do this. And uh, w what are the benefits of using this approach instead of using Helm functionality for rollouts, et cetera? Yeah, so for example, for Kubernetes, of course, you have to you have to keep in mind that uh, it can you can make things happen more easily so uh, for example when you have a when you bake bake a new docker image you can update that into the kubernetes deployment with one command so kubernetes uh, kubectl set image so uh, this is really simple so uh, in considering spinnaker and kubernetes this was actually something that i asked asked the de developers and the community uh, in spinnaker slack kind of what is what is if you only have Kubernetes? What's the real value of Spinnaker? And uh, uh, basically, the answer was that uh, there is a lot of other things available. So in Spinnaker, uh, so you can do testing and uh, all kinds uh, kinds of things. So, but uh, for simple simple use case, you could if you have already Jenkins, you could just uh, bake the Docker images there upload to to private registry and uh, uh, use the use the kubectl to update the image so uh, 
Uh, definitely, if you are on only like Kubernetes shop, you t it might not be might not be best to to use the Spinnaker and. Uh, uh yeah like i said the v2 kubernetes provider it's still still work in the progress so i i wouldn't personally maybe use it at this point unless you you really want to see it so the v1 which i have tried it's it's very opinionated so it it's maybe too simple for most use cases at, at this point in, in the past it was useful uh, but not so much anymore because you need a lot of you need you need a lot of objects or manifests when you deploy an application into Kubernetes, and uh, it's not really really useful anymore. I hope this answered your question in some some level at least. If you have any more questions, just catch you after the talk. Exactly. So thank you very much for your talk. Big round of applause. Mm.